In the absence of a discrete agreement between two trading countries or a customs union, the rules of the World Trade Organization describe how trade will be conducted for a nation. These rules are many and complex, but are guided by one principle. To avoid trade disputes, in the absence of any other agreement, countries should not discriminate against other countries through tariffs, quotas, licensing or standards. The country of origin of goods should make no difference in the way those goods are treated. This doesn't mean, however, that a country trading under World Trade Organization rules is going to be free from tariffs. To take an example entirely at random, let us imagine that the United Kingdom leaves the free trade agreement it has with the rest of Europe. World Trade Organization rules do not mean that the EU cannot impose tariffs on the United Kingdom. In fact, they mean the opposite. Because the European Union imposes tariffs on everybody that is outside of its trading bloc, in order to be non-discriminatory, it would have to treat Britain the same as everyone else and impose tariffs. Similarly, Britain would probably be obliged under its current trading legislation to apply tariffs on goods from the European Union. This would lead to increased prices of things such as food. The core of the World Trade Organization's purpose is to avoid trade disputes, but this is a more complicated task than simply having the position that more free trade deals is better. Here is an example. There is an ongoing trade dispute between the EU and the USA concerning banana imports to Europe. The EU has previously leveraged its colonial past in the Caribbean to negotiate particularly favourable terms for the import of bananas. On a level playing field, it would be cheaper for Europe to import its bananas from South America, where the vast majority of the world's bananas are grown by companies owned in the United States. The United States, then, considers these deals with the Caribbean to constitute unfair competition, and they are currently under investigation by the World Trade Organization. It is vital to avoid these trade disputes getting out of hand. One tariff can provoke another in response, which can itself prompt an even stronger reaction. This is called a trade war. Often, they are more than a simple spat about money and can even be triggered intentionally if one country believes it is economically strong enough to survive the fallout and the other is not. Since the Second World War, the United States has been the only global economic superpower. Even China, the EU or the Soviet Union when it was at its height don't come close. This means that in order to be considered economically successful, a country needs to sell into the American market. Since so many countries need America, but America does not need them, it creates an unbalanced system where the United States can impose just about anything on its partners. These can range from free access to a country by American firms, to the sale of weapons, to the imposition of military bases or even regime change. Arguably, this sort of trading hegemony has replaced the old imperial forms of international domination, and the end result is almost indistinguishable. Because the funny thing is that the United States is far too powerful for the World Trade Organization to meaningfully sanction. So it's only really the smaller countries that are punished when its rules are flouted. And when trade might be used as a weapon against you, it would be folly to think you could rely on World Trade Organization rules.